Can I invite you to stand? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus received the news of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew by a boat to a lonely place where he could be by himself. But the people heard of this and leaving the towns went after him on foot. So as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them and he healed their sick. And when evening came, the disciples went to him and said, this is a lonely place and the time is slipped by. So send the people away and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, there's no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourself. But they answered, all we have with us is five loaves and two fish. Bring them here, he said. And he gave the orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. And then he took the five loaves and the two fish. He raised his eyes to heaven and said the blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to his disciples who gave them to the crowds. And they all ate as much as they wanted. And they collected the scraps remaining, 12 baskets full. Those who ate numbered about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Can I invite you to sit? The reading today is the reading that the church throughout the world uses. For all of us who share the common lectionary, so I didn't choose it specially. It starts by recognizing the death of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was killed by Herod, who was the king of Israel at that time. And so it recognizes that a delicate balance between state and religion always is a tension everywhere. And Jesus goes to a lonely place because John is his, his precursor, the one who goes before him. And he recognizes as John has gone, so too he will go. He heads for the lonely place and the crowds keep coming at him. And he keeps healing and he keeps ministering to them. And that's the image that I want us to hold for these last three months, four months with COVID. But it's also an image I want you to hold for the last 30 years as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the coup. John the Baptist was killed because he chose to speak truth to power. We face a terrible ordeal in our country. And we too are finding a lonely place where we can recollect and where we can reflect on the events that happened 30 years ago. As these events are unfolding, we have to recognize that democracy is a very fragile thing. And the fragility of democracy is why we come to pray and why we honor this time. Because yesterday, on the 1st of August, that was the day that the whole thing ended. Or did it really end is a real question. As we celebrate this milestone in our history where we lost innocence, where the sacred chamber of parliament was violated, and where we recognize that we as a people woke up differently because we saw what happens with democracy. I have been bishop in three different countries. And I can say that I've seen how fragile democracy is. And, and it is something that we can't say often enough of how it needs to be cherished, preserved, and protected. As we see the reading though, it gives us some incredible insights. Because the disciples, wanted Jesus to send the crowds away. You see, they had enough food for themselves, five loaves and two fish, but not enough to feed the crowd. And so they were more interested in themselves being fed than in the care for the crowd. 
And this is the second real challenge to democracy. Our nation, V.S. Naipaul has said, many years ago in a wonderful book he wrote, a travel log, he called us a picaroon society, a people who are more interested in street hustling than in the long-term development of our nation. And that's the challenge that we still face when we want to preserve ourselves and not everyone else, when we don't want to work for the common good, when we choose that we don't want to wear a mask in public, and we don't want to preserve the health of others, or we want to destroy democracy, we are acting as the disciples were acting. But thank God Jesus acted differently, because he took two loaves and a few fish. And with those loaves and fish, he fed the multitude. And he demonstrated God's economy, which is different from ours. It's an economy of abundance. There is always more than enough for everyone if we understand what it is to be generous with what we have. And it is that too that we celebrate today, that our nation has been an incredibly generous nation. And that's why in our life as a nation, we understand that God will always, has always preserved us. And insofar as we keep God's center, God will continue to demonstrate that the grace of God is always far more than the challenges that we face. And this abundance, this abundance of feeding with 12 baskets left over is what I pray for for our nation. The Lord today as we recognize the trials that we have faced, as we recognize the way in which democracy has been challenged, and the way that we as a nation have been violated, that as we call upon you, we know, O oh God, that if we all, as citizens of this great nation, give you the little fish and loaves that we carry, that you will do something special. And we'll see not just scarcity in our affairs, but abundance through your providence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.